Hey, my name is Justin Case, and I want to talk to you about the Helium Vote. Now, there is one more HIP. If you've looked at some of the other videos that he just recently released, I talked about HIP 105, and I talked about HIP 103. But there is one more HIP that is being voted on right now when it comes to mobile, and that is HIP 98, Modification of Mobile Sub-DAO Hex Limits. I gotta say, some of you love your rules, uh, but let's get into it. So, HIP 98, Mobile Subdow Quality of Service Requirements. Summary, this helium improvement proposal sets quality of service requirements that were noted within this blog post. I find it interesting. They can't even be bothered to explain it here. They need to point you to something else to have to read. But obviously, looking at it, it's about proof of coverage milestones and uh, the reward algorithm system, uh, which I, looking at it right now, I don't even want to get into. I would like to say, though, if the person who wrote this could have simplified it in a summary, that would have been really nice. Okay, I'm going to go back here and look at the motivation. Previous quality of service requirements were implemented for the mobile network without community input or vote. As these requirements were previously implemented, implemented without a HIP, a HIP is being created to memorialize these <laughs> requirements. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, people love their bureaucracy uh, because, because they were not voted on. Let's vote on them now. And what happens if we say no? I got to ask, does that mean that the current requirements get rescinded? I don't think so. So what's the point? Is it is is this person just hoping, the person who made this, hoping that we'll just vote it in because it's already in and then call it a day? I actually, not even reading it, uh, want to vote no on it just to see what difference it makes. In fact, you know what? Even before I go through the detailed explanation, let's just let's just look at the bottom. I got to read this. Uh, okay, rationale and de deployment impact. Okay, um, as the Helium 5G network matures, it's vitally important that the quality of the network and deployment provide useful and consistent coverage. Sure, but, <laughs> but how does this help? Because we're just voting on something that you just said is already happening. Uh, deployment impact. Protocol engineers will have to change the spreadsheet requirement to incorporate the new acceptable multiplier. Oh, so maybe I'm wrong. There is now an acceptable multiplier of 0.75 upon passing. All right. Let's see. Success metric. As most of what written, as most of what is written in this HIP has already been previously imp implemented, this HIP will be considered successful if it is passed. If this HIP does not pass, any quality of service metric already previously established outside of a HIP process, such as a speed test and heartbeat requirement, must immediately be removed from the Helium 5G network. Oh immediately removed. So if this HIP doesn't pass, then we have to get rid of speed tests that lower rewards and heartbeat requirements that cause it to take days to weeks to onboard a device. Hmm. Okay, I'm not I'm not even saying I, 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 I'm making faces, but I'm not saying that I want any of that. I'm just I just find it all all interesting and it's good to know exactly what this is going to do. So basically what they're saying is when it comes to heartbeats and speed tests, both of those go away uh, so we don't get lowered by speed tests or we we don't get stopped from getting online by not having heartbeats. Um, and I, I do believe some of those things honestly are important to make sure that they're on the network, but, oh my God, they're not implemented as part of the base, um, application. I have to use, 
uh, Helium Geek in order to find out that information. And that's ridiculous. I should be able to just find it out through the standard Helium app. And that's what I'd love to see. I'd love to see it say, if this is implemented, they also have to implement it in the standard Helium app so everybody knows what's going on in their app. Or at least their dashboard. Uh, not through a third-party app. Okay, let's read it. Uh, a heartbeat is data sent by the Wi-Fi access point or 5G hotspot indicating that a connected radio is authorized to transmit 5G coverage. Heartbeats occur every 60 seconds. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Heartbeat reward tiers. Each radio and access point is given a heartbeat with a multiplier of a 1 or a 0. This multiplier only affects proof of coverage rewards. Each radio and access point is awarded 1 point for a valid heartbeat in each in each hour with a maximum of 24 points uh, in a reward period. All radios and access points with at least 12 points or heartbeats in that 24-hour period are given a multiplier of 1. Okay. I mean, that's what it is now. Um, speed tests and reward tiers. Many locations where connectivity is being deployed, including some rural areas, do not always have the high-speed internet connectivity needed to meet the acceptable internet requirements for Genesis rewards consistently. Why are they talking about Genesis rewards? Don't we pass that? Um, note the tiering and multiplier proposed below are only acceptable to proof of coverage rewards. Mobile rewards for data transfer are not affected. Often these areas do not have good cellular coverage either, and that's why it's essential to incentivize helium deployments in less well-connected areas. What? Hold on. Didn't we just have HIP 103 that was really trying to get away from well-connected areas? Uh, HIP 103 is saying, like, if it's all farmland, um, that's not a good thing. We're going to de-incentivize you for putting your helium deployments there. And now you're saying uh, it's essential to incentivize helium deployments in less well-connected areas. I'm totally confused about what people are trying to achieve. Um, okay, anyway. Speed test results are categorized in one of four tiers, good, acceptable, degraded, poor, and fail. Please note this hit proposes changing the name of the 1x speed test multiplier to good and adding a new 0.75x multiplier for acceptable. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Right now, uh, we go from uh, 1 to half to 0.25 and... They want it going from 1 to 0.75 to 0.5 to 0.25 to fail. Okay. Um, speed test values are used as multipliers and reward calculations as followed. Uh, speed test results are put into tiers based off of minimum value of download, upload, latency. Speed test results do not meet the requirements of any download, upload, or latency are considered to have failed and are not eligible for proof of coverage rewards until the speed test average is improved. Uh, and then there's the multiplier effect. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm not even going to read, read the rest of this, uh, because I just want to get down to some of these other more important ones. In order for CBRS radios to earn rewards for epochs, the radio must be authorized by SAS and on air. Okay. CBRS radios. Sure. If these metrics are not met for 12 or more heartbeats during an epoch, the radio will not earn POC rewards for that epoch. Is that, I, I assume that's happening now, again. Um, so, as per HIP 93, after initial assertion and location of Wi-Fi access point on onboarding, the system will periodically verify the access point location. Does it do this now? This is to prevent situations in which the Wi-Fi access point is onboarded in one location and then moved to a different location. In the current implementation, the location validation service provides this verification twice a day. Uh, this timestamp of the last verification and the last derived latitude longitude are subsequently included in the heartbeats and submitted. Sorry, I'm trying to get my cat to stop banging on the door. Uh, submitted by the Wi-Fi access point to the oracles. Um, so, you know, actually, it's interesting. Um, it's good to know. I mean, I am I suppose I'm glad 
that they at least put it in a hip so I know where to read it. Otherwise, I suppose it's only in a blog post that explains all of this. Although, my God, what a long uh, post it is. Is this is this a blog post? This looks like a um, this this looks like something in the docs itself. I think this is in the docs. This is not a blog post. Why are they calling it a blog post? This is this is in the help docs. Anyway, um, all of this stuff is already in. <laughs> this has already been implemented. So at the end of the day, I, I'm not going to read anymore. The only thing that's not implemented is that acceptable 0.75 multiplier, right? So the question is, I mean, sure, we can have it. We can not have that one, whatever. The question is, at the end of the day, I think when it comes to hip 98 is, do you like these systems of verification that are already implemented? Uh, if you like all of these verifications, then good. Just say yes and call it a day. Um, I quite honestly wonder how many people want to lock up points to say yes to this or some of you who uh, might just for fun lock up points to say no to it simply because you don't like how it, long it takes to onboard your system because you can't see your heartbeats and don't know you're not getting heartbeats because they didn't implement that as part of the standard uh, Helium Builder app. Uh, and as well, you can't even check speed tests through that either. Both of those things ought to have been built in if those are things we need to verify as part of the quality of service requirements. So uh, I wish this wasn't voted on right now. I wish you know, they had thought about doing that kind of thing that would have been nice for the rest of us, right? A little, little thoughtful. Okay, um, <laughs> it's late for me, and uh, I'm uh, maybe a little more uh, punch drunk than I normally am, so I'm going to say thank you all for watching. Please do like this video. If you want more content like this, please do subscribe to my channel, and you all have a great evening.